Today, we're going to cover one of the most cultural cities in the U.S. From its mouth-watering eating establishments to its rancid streets full of potholes and human waste. A place where folks pay to tour lots full of dead people, eat fried reptiles, and flash their memory glands for plastic crap. Get lost in a sea of indecipherable street signs and get laughed at by calling this a trolley because we're going to New Orleans, Louisiana. Hey, I'm Jacob and welcome to Destinations Explained, a fun series we do that dives into destinations from around the world. If you watched before, welcome back. And if you're new here, it's great to have you. If you haven't already, like this video, watch till the end, and down below, comment any places we may have missed. Today's episode is quite a doozy. How long is it? 30, 35, even 40 minutes? Apologies to our video editor, who is me, but hey, New Orleans is an extra special destination. Could it be that it's home to world famous restaurants and museums, or the fact that it's our highest requested city to cover? Maybe it's because I was born and raised here. Yep, that's me, with my family in front of our sad little house that was flooded by that silly little storm. But hey, that was 2005. I'm totally over it. Anyway, let's cover a little bit about the city. Founded in 1718 by French colonists, New Orleans was once the territorial capital of French Louisiana before becoming part of the United States in the Louisiana Purchase of 1803. By 1840, New Orleans was the third most populous city in the country. Although the state of Louisiana was admitted to the Union back in 1812, New Orleans was switching clubs like a Belgian footballer until the end of the Civil War. This on-again, off-again relationship with the Europeans is what manifested the marvelous architecture you'll find in New Orleans today. It's also what led to Creole cuisine, music, and dialect. Here's something we don't cover much in our history lessons. Elevation. New Orleans doesn't have it. In fact, over half the area is at or below sea level. Seriously, go visit the city while you can. You may just live to see this place become Atlantis. When Hurricane Katrina struck in 2005, levee breaches had parts of New Orleans under 10 plus feet of water. Like this part, where I lived. I'm totally over it. Today, New Orleans is the 53rd largest city in the United States with a population shy of 400,000 people, with a total metropolitan area listed at about 1.3 million. Here in the deep south, high summer temperatures average 91 degrees Fahrenheit to a low of 77 degrees Fahrenheit. But with the humidity and the whole planet dying thing, just know that it's hot. Like always. Winters are nice though with an average high temperature of 63 degrees Fahrenheit to a low of 46 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, that just about sums it up. Let's see what this top US destination has to offer. For our first tourist destination, why not a tour? In a city as old as New Orleans, the dead outnumber the living. And the city is full of hauntingly beautiful cemeteries. And the good folks over at French Quarter Phantoms will guide you through them. Burying the dead in a place built below sea level wasn't exactly the best idea. Residents were getting fed up with grandma floating down a street every time it rained. So they came up with a solution. Classy above ground marble death vaults that over time aged into eerie chambers we get to admire till this day. Thanks to people like French Quarter Phantoms, we can participate in a guided tours through the rich history of New Orleans' deceased and admire architecture like no other. New Orleans is one of the most tourist-heavy cities in the nation, and it's all thanks to the oldest neighborhood in the city, the French Quarter. The district as a whole has been designated as a National Historic Landmark, and you could easily spend a week's vacation in its 78 square blocks. Start at the French Market in front of the Jazz Museum, and trek through the various vendors selling art and souvenirs in the flea market. Making your way down Decatur Street, you'll find various bars and restaurants crammed with people stuffing their face with overpriced Creole cooking while listening to infectious jazz bands. A few blocks later, you'll find yourself at Jackson Square, home to the St. Louis Cathedral, local street art vendors, Cafe Du Monde, and the vantage point from Washington Artillery Park. Getting hot? Grab a plastic cup full of your favorite fermented substance from the closest bar and keep moving. Because in case you didn't know, it's completely legal to carry an open container while walking around a quarter. Parallel to Decatur, you'll find Charters, Royal, and of course, Bourbon, which are all worth strolling through. Look, there's a lot to do here. Our advice would just be to walk around and choose as your heart desires. However, we will be covering some more specific places in the quarter when we get to the bars and restaurants section of the video. 
Just east of the quarter, you'll find Bywater. What used to be a gritty area of the city is now a bustling neighborhood mixed with residents, businesses, and art, like Studio B. This visual art, housed in a 35,000 square foot warehouse, depicts the stories of the revolutionaries, heroes, and everyday New Orleanians with guided or independent tours. Local artist Brandon B. Mike Odoms wanted to put paint where it ain't and bring abandoned spaces to life with his art. Images spray painted on large canvases expressing social justice and what it means to be human, what it means to be in a moment. You can show support after a tour by purchasing original pieces from the collection, such as prints, pins, and apparel. Now, we've all heard about Mardi Gras, the annual festival in New Orleans that brings in thousands of tourists to party in the streets while floats drive by. But where do these floats come from, and who creates them? The answer is Mardi Gras World, also known as Kern Studios, named after Roy Kern, who contributed his first float back in 1947. After many requests for private tours from people wanting a sneak peek of their space, the family decided to open up the working studio to the public. In 1984, Mardi Gras World was created as a tourist attraction to provide visitors a behind-the-scenes look of their work. Today, you can explore the 300,000 square foot warehouse, where most of the floats that journey down New Orleans streets during the carnival season are designed and built. Here, you'll learn about the many traditions surrounding Mardi Gras parades, balls, and music, as well as the intricacies of float designing and building. And get close-up views of the mega floats, which hold up more than 200 masked riders and are lit with fiber optic cables and laser lights. Just make sure to check out their website online for hours of operation and ticket prices. Now, before we move on, let's take a second to talk to a true local from New Orleans and get some cool recommendations. Today, we have Linda from Lady Luna Nola on Instagram. So let's see what she has to recommend. Hey, Linda, how's it going today? Hey, hey, thanks for having me. Of course, we are in the tourist section of our video and we just need a little help. We need some good recommendations from a local like you. So what can you recommend for us today? I think I have a couple of good ideas. Let me just say that, uh, you know, the legends and lures about vampires in this town literally began three centuries ago with the arrival of the first settlers from Europe. And we are just steeped in vampire history and tours and books and stores and everything. And fortunately, it made its debut this year is the New Orleans Vampire Cafe. It is truly elegant five-star cuisine in an immersive Gothic vampire-inspired dining experience down to the smallest details. It's just gorgeous. Now, if you're thinking, I'm not really into cool gothic vampire stuff. Well, it doesn't matter because whether you're a mortal, a day walker, or the undead, there is something for everyone. Have a full service bar, includes craft cocktails by blood type, magical potions, and even specialty wines from, and this is a real place, the Vampire Vineyards in California. Tourists may enjoy the traditional New Orleans cuisine like seafood gumbo or shrimp and grits, alligator po' boys. But for the more adventurous, bloody taste buds, there's beef tartare, vampire ribeye, just to name a few. Last but not least, in great New Orleans tradition, you can take your souvenir to-go bag with you in this fabulous to-go IV blood bag filled with none other than Fang Gria which mm. is about the best sangria I've ever had. So it's a truly memorable experience. Man, that sounds amazing. Do you have one more suggestion for us? I do, a completely different idea. Okay. Uh, if you'd like to get away from the French Quarter, the hustle and bustle, just sit back, relax, maybe do a little sightseeing on your own. I gotta recommend hopping on the historic St. Charles streetcar line. And the fun fact is you'll be riding in streetcars that are about 100 years old. This street line is the oldest running street line in the world. So that's the little history lesson. It's public transportation. It runs 24 seven, easily accessible from the French Quarter. There's mobile apps that you can download when you get here and can give you stops and times if you really need it. Essentially, you'll just have unobstructed views of a whole list of stuff. Dozens of huge mansions, restaurants, shops, historic architecture, wine bars. You're gonna go past Loyola, Audubon, cemeteries. There is so much packed in this 13 mile little stretch. 
you could literally spend a week exploring everything. Any point in time, if you want to jump off, you just pull a little string over by the window, they'll let you right off at the next stop. For $3, you can buy the Jazzy Pass. I like saying that, Jazzy Pass, <laughs> which is unlimited all day hopping. So it's, it's a fun thing to do. You can do it for days or one. All right. Well, that's two really good places. Thanks again for joining us today and we'll see you later. Okay, thanks. Don't forget to follow Linda at Lady Luna Nola on Instagram. Link in the description below. For our first nature and recreational suggestion on our list, we have a city park so large that it's approximately 50% larger than Central Park in New York City, plainly named City Park. For over 170 years, New Orleans City Park has provided access to abundant natural and cultural resources to residents and tourists alike. The park is home to the Cataray Forest and Arboretum, the New Orleans Botanical Garden, the New Orleans Museum of Art, and the largest grove of mature live oaks in the world, some of which are nearly 800 years old. And we can't forget Laborde Mountain. Measuring a daunting 43 feet above sea level, this is the highest point in all of New Orleans. But don't worry. Sherpas and oxygen will be available upon request. The park provides walking trails, an urban forest, and open space, perfect for escaping the crazy tourist areas. Walking through the hanging moss canopies is a total vibe, and there's even another Café du Monde location within the park, if you want to avoid the French Quarter location. For your families watching who love a good fairy tale, Storyland is a storybook-themed playground with over 25 giant sculptures from all your favorite bedtime stories. And we can't forget Celebration in the Oaks, which runs annually from late November to early January. It displays a spectacular holiday light festival within the park, perfect for all ages. You don't really need to rent a car in New Orleans to see all the tourist spots. But when it comes to nature, there's some day trips worth trying. About 40 minutes north of the city, on the north shore of Lake Pontchartrain, you'll find Mandeville Lakefront. On the way there, you'll get to experience the tedious Lake Pontchartrain Causeway, the world's largest continuous bridge over water spanning almost 24 miles. Once on land, you'll be in the quaint town of Mandeville, home to visitor shopping, memorable restaurants, attractions, and places to explore the outdoors. The Mandeville lakefront spans a dozen blocks along the lake, home to giant oak trees, a walking trail, playgrounds, and a sandy beach. Run a bike from Brooks Bicycle Co-op and Museum and ride along the paved path with ease and catch the view around the cove at Sunset Point Park, out on the Fisher Pier. As always, you'll find a bunch of helpful links down in the description below. Heading back to the city, you'll want to stop by Uptown New Orleans' greatest attraction, the Audubon Neighborhood, where you'll find the Audubon Park, another laid-back stop to enjoy the calmer side of the city. A large percentage of the park includes the Audubon Park Golf Course. However, the borders of the park encompasses great spots to picnic, birdwatch, and even people watch. The Ottoman Park Loop circles the area, paving a perfect two-mile path for walkers, runners, and cyclists. Our favorite activity in the area is catching the sunset at Ottoman Riverview Park, just on the other side of the zoo, along the Mississippi River. Here, you'll find a butterfly pavilion, a charming gazebo along the river, perfect for catching a Dixieland sunset. All right. Let's stop looking at these urban parks and start getting into some real nature attractions. Just 30 minutes south of the city, down in the swamps of southern Louisiana, lies acres of wetlands and preserved in Jean Lafitte National Historic Park. Named after a French pirate who got his good name from helping Andrew Jackson's forces defend New Orleans during the final battle of the War of 1812. Today, you're welcome to bring yourself and a group and walk on the boardwalk trail through the wild Louisiana swamp and marsh. Starting at the Baratira Preserve Visitor Center, you can hike the Palmetto Trail two miles up to the rewarding lookout view. Now, you don't have to take our word for it, but you're almost guaranteed to see a gator. Didn't see a gator? Fine. Let's go even more south and get on an airboat. Why walk through swamp when you can pay someone at Airboat Adventures to guide you? Just 45 minutes from the French Quarter, they're open year round, seven days a week, and will even pick you up from any hotel in the greater New Orleans area. Book one of the three sized boats, whichever is best for you or your party, and get ready for countless alligators, birds, and other wildlife. 
But this isn't just some taxi driver quietly driving you from point A to point B. We guarantee your airboat captain will teach you everything you need to know about the essence of Louisiana swamps. And if you're lucky, they'll bring a bag of marshmallows and let you feed the gators nearby. Also, it's not just a history lesson either. Most visitors praise the captain's humor and amazing storytelling, assuring they'll keep you entertained. All right. Before we head back into the city, let's bring back Linda and see if she has any cool nature recreational things to do in the city. Hey, Linda, just had to have you back. We are on the nature recreational part of the video and we just want to know what's something cool to do outside in New Orleans. There is this little gem called Crescent Park. First, it's free and it's family friendly. The park is really new. It just opened in 2016. And it's literally just a mile and a quarter stretch. There's walking and running paths, bike paths, a dog park, huge covered areas, picnic tables. It's a perfect place to sit, relax, enjoy the river or do some exercise. You gotta bring your camera because you're gonna see some of the most beautiful New Orleans skyline. And then the highlight of the park, which you cannot miss if you walk most of the way down, is the Piety Street Bridge. You really can't miss it. It's stunning, raw, rusty, intentionally done by the architecture, steel pedestrian bridge that goes right over the railroad tracks. And we call it the rusty rainbow because that's exactly what it looks like. And it's quite a hike up and down, but when you're at the top, it's a perfect place to like catch your breath and just take that 360 degree view of the city and the area. It's such a quaint little place. Wow, that sounds awesome. Do you have any day trips worthy or like something outside the city we're seeing? We have a lot of plantations outside of the city along the river. If you're looking for a really memorable day trip away from the city, I would highly recommend Oak Alley Plantation. It's not only just stunningly beautiful, but it's a very informative step back in time. It's probably a good 45, 60 minutes out of the city. Probably more pictures have been taken of this plantation and Hollywood just loves it to film places there. It's most notable and named after its double rows of Southern live oak trees that were planted early 1700s. So we're talking about trees that are 300 years old. The tour and the plantation itself really encourage you to explore all parts of the plantation's past. And I have to emphasize in these days that all means good and the bad. With many exhibits that you wander through, this includes their standout exhibit, which is slavery at Oak Alley which was made with the intention, and I quote, the owner said this, being as open and informative as possible with the utmost transparency and sensitivity. Of course, there's also exhibits on the Civil War and how it affected the plantation, the sugarcane theater, wander the gardens, and then you get this really awesome house tour at the end of it all. My fun fact is you'll recognize it from some movies. There's a number of them, but my favorite is, of course, Anne Rice's interview with a vampire with Brad Pitt. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll, you'll notice. You've seen it before, trust me. All right, Linda. Well, that's another great two suggestions. So I guess that's all we have for you today and we'll see you later. Well, thank you, Jacob. Thanks again, Linda. And remember, her link is down in the description below. And you know what else is linked down in the description below? Today's sponsor. Jacob, what are you doing? Washing my face. With a bar of soap? But soap clean. Soap face is clean. No, no, babe. Do you know what absolutely no one needs more of in their lives? Blotchy spots, dry skin, and everyone's favorite unsightly friend, acne. Luckily, Geology is the timely sponsor for today's video. That will be our saving grace. We've all seen the same old skincare commercials every day for years now. So you might ask, Venture Addicts, why did you partner with a skincare brand? Well, we'll tell you. This is the first time we've ever personally seen a regimen based on your skin type. I mean, who in their right mind would say that everyone's skin is the same? So why are we using cookie cutter skincare routines? Listen, Geology takes the complexity out of walking through the skincare aisle at Target 
only to be bombarded with flashy advertising with wild promises without even asking about your skin. It's simple. Just click the link in our description below and take Geology's skin type quiz. It only takes about 30 seconds to take, so don't stress. Once you're done, they'll send you immediate results based on the science behind what makes your skin unique. Then, they'll have a custom kit formulated for keeping your specific skin type healthy and clear. And for our viewers, they let us literally give you 50% off on your first order. Just click the link in the description below, go through the quiz, and enter code VADX50 at checkout to knock off an entire half of your order. Look, it doesn't have to be complicated anymore. If you're like us, you want a simple regimen that you know is actually healthy for your skin. Whether you have acne, trouble exfoliating, or dark marks under your eyes, Geology will design a personalized solution for you. You're helping out your skin, and you're helping us produce these videos. When you go to the link in our description, claim your 50% off today. Now, let's get back into the video. Let's head back to the city and check out some top-notch restaurants. We are in New Orleans after all. Why not start with some Creole food? Or is it Cajun food? Actually, I'm not sure. These days, the lines between Creole and Cajun have begun to blur. Honestly, to us, it doesn't matter. When it comes to Cajun, Creole, or seafood cuisine, the options are endless. So here's our favorite spots, starting with Brennan's. Founded in 1946 by Owen Brennan, an Irish-American restauranteur and New Orleans native. For decades, Brennan's has charmed the palates and hearts of patrons with its splendid ambience, impeccable service, and authentic Creole cuisine. Open for a limited time throughout the week, most people make the effort to catch brunch to start their day off with turtle soup or Brennan's original, Eggs Hussard. Ever heard of Bananas Foster? Yep, they invented it. And it's set aflame table side per serving. Like most fancy white tablecloth-like restaurants in New Orleans, they have a dress code. However, Brennan seems to be more lax, especially to tourists, but you've been warned. Looking for something a little more casual? We know a spot. Staying in the French Quarter, just a block away, you'll find Napoleon House, a 200-year-old landmark first occupied by Nicolas Girard, the mayor of New Orleans from 1812 to 1815. At the time, he offered his residence to Napoleon Bonaparte in 1821 as a refuge during his exile. Napoleon never made it, but the name stuck. Today, the Napoleon House restaurant has an old-time New Orleans atmosphere and serves traditional dishes such as red beans and rice, gumbo, and jambalaya. And a lot of people swear by their specialty Italian muffalata. This place has it all. Classic Nola grub, authentic interior, and a reasonably priced menu. So definitely check out Napoleon House when you're in the quarter. Those last two restaurants are a must, but if you only had time for one place to get Creole soul food, then you need to get on a streetcar and head uptown to Giacomo's. Alligator, etouffee, andouille, barbecue shrimp, there's just never enough room in your stomach to try all the New Orleans classic dishes. The waits are long and it's only open for dinner for a few days, but Giacomo's is an essential experience that you should have at least just once in your life. The atmosphere is very homey with funky decor and with huge entree portions, you'll feel right at home. And for dessert, what else but the alligator cheesecake? You heard that right. Their shrimp and alligator sausage cheesecake may sound funny, but it's a must when visiting Giacomo's. Let's say you're having an off day and you don't want to eat a bunch of seafood. That's fine because in one of my favorite parts of town in mid city, you'll find Katie's. Their diverse menu has something for every group or family member you bring. From crawfish beignets to blackberry jalapeno ribs, they even have great pizza. But like most NOLA restaurants, they serve great old fashioned Southern cooking. And don't forget to check them out on Sundays for an exclusive brunch menu. Po'boys are another classic meal when it comes to New Orleans, and you'll find great ones just about anywhere. But our favorite is Parkway Bakery and Tavern. Just a few blocks away from Katie's lies Mid-City's best neighborhood hangout for delicious goodness wrapped inside a warm French bread loaf. The best po'boys either contain fried seafood, roast beef, or savory sausage. But there's even more options if you're into something else. There's plenty of sides and desserts to choose from and many spots to dine in, like their tavern, an intimate dive-like bar where you can skip the line at the counter and just order from a bartender. But you didn't hear that from us. Oh, and also, this place is Obama approved. Him and the missus both visited a few years ago and they both love the place. In case you're curious, they both got the shrimp po' boy and a side of turkey alligator gumbo. In Philadelphia, they have Pat's and Gino's, one of which invented the Philly cheesesteak. But despite being the inventors, they both have terrible and overpriced food. Central Grocery, on the other hand, invented the muffalata here in New Orleans. But unlike Pat's and Gino's, it doesn't suck. Look. 
All of our favorite New Orleans food doesn't just come from the French. Thanks to a wave of Sicilian immigrants during the last part of the 19th century, the culinary presence of New Orleans grew. Hence the creation of the hearty sandwich of salami and provolone topped with a distinctive olive salad. The muffalata is now a staple sandwich of the Big Easy, and today you can still visit the third generation family owned store to taste this must try delicacy. Okay, red beans and rice, gumbo, jambalaya, po' boys, muffaladas. What else are we missing? Ah yes, raw, slimy, saltwater bivalve mollusks, better known as oysters. Whether you want them raw or charbroiled, you'll want to stop at Niao's Creole Cafe. Niao's is a southern style restaurant located in mid-city, offering homemade dishes from appetizers and entrees all the way down to mouth-watering desserts. If you're looking for a laid-back place and a black-owned business to support, then this is the spot. Order a dozen raw oysters, top them with some lemon juice, Tabasco, and horseradish, and go to town on those bad boys. Don't like the sensation of slurping a cold loogie from a dirty shell? Fine, try the char-grilled oysters then. These oysters are grilled hot and smothered in cheese and butter. Because you know it's always easier to convince someone to eat something that's covered in butter and cheese. Before we move on, you may be thinking, um, Jacob, what about crawfish? Yeah, about that. If you go up to anyone in New Orleans and you ask them who has the best crawfish, they're going to answer every time, their family. Oh, and for the record, my grandpa, he makes the best crawfish. But if you're visiting New Orleans and don't get an invite to anyone's cool crawfish boil, then I don't know what to tell you. So for anyone watching who's actually from New Orleans or has visited and actually knows a good spot, just write down in the comments down below what you think is the best. All right. It's time to get serious, and I'm sorry, but the gatekeeper in me is about to come out. Because if you're not drinking chicory in New Orleans, then you're not drinking coffee. So you may be thinking, what the hell is chicory? To make a long story short, chicory coffee is made from the roots of the flowering chicory plant. During the Civil War, when there was a coffee shortage, locals would cut their coffee with ground roasted chicory to make it last longer. Turns out the chicory added quite a kick and complemented the coffee's flavor. Until this day, you'll find chicory coffee just about anywhere in the city, even over here in Texas, inside my sad little empty pantry. So where should you try chicory coffee in New Orleans? Well. We know a spot that makes its own, and they're kind of famous. Café du Monde. Ever heard of them? But hold up, hold up, not too fast. Because we have another unsolicited history lesson for you. Café du Monde vs. Morning Call. Electric Boogaloo. A café by the name of Morning Call opened in 1870 at the lower end of the New Orleans French market, eight years after its main competitor, Café du Monde, opened a few blocks upriver in the French Quarter. Locals long had personal opinions regarding whether they preferred Morning Call or the original Café du Monde. After years of increasing rent, Morning Call moved out to the commercial district of Metairie, ending the petty neighborhood war. However, in 2012, Morning Call opened a new location in City Park's casino building, a prime spot in the park, and were sitting pretty in New Orleans' beautiful urban park. But a new war started, a bidding war. Just months after having to close their 40 plus year running Metairie location, City Park did their boys dirty and began a bid process, forcing Morning Call to bid for their life of their one and only store. Café du Monde bid the highest with a whopping $25,760 a month and Morning Call was gone forever. Until 2021, Morning Call returned once again to the City Park area, opening its current location at 5115 Canal Boulevard. 150 years later, and these two are still going at it like two old geezers fighting with canes. So, Jacob, which side are you on? Well, they both have immensely underrated frozen cafe au lait's. And honestly, I don't think I could pass a blind test with their beignets. But look, I go for the underdog. Morning Call is undoubtedly the dark horse of the story. But I guess you'll have to visit for yourself and find out. Whew, man, that was a lot. Maybe we should talk about something that doesn't involve coffee. Nah. New Orleans may be known for its unique coffee culture, but nothing tops their impeccable thirst for booze. So why not combine the two for a delicious Irish coffee at Erin Rose? Move over French and Italian immigrants, cause it's time to shout out our whiskey loving visitors. This French Quarter neighborhood bar is known for its welcoming atmosphere, delicious Bloody Marys, friendly bartenders, and of course, their famous frozen Irish coffees. With a delicious mix of coffee, Irish whiskey, chocolate, and sweet cream, Aaron Rose will definitely start your day off right. 
Now for the dessert section of the video, typically in other videos, we just talk about one spot, but of course, New Orleans has to do its thing and be all cool and have multiple interesting things. So today we're gonna dive into three separate places around the city to get our sweet tooth fix. Pralines have come in all shapes and sizes for over a century, but nothing beats a delicious Southern style praline from Southern candy makers. Thanks to the combination of French settlers and an abundant source of sugar cane and pecan trees, New Orleans is undoubtedly the best city in North America to grab a praline. Pralines have a creamy consistency similar to fudge and Southern candy makers have mastered the recipe dating back to 1992 in their family owned candy store. Do y'all like snow cones? Yeah? Get out. Go. I'll wait. This is a snowball only channel. Snowballs are the ultimate shaved ice delicacy. Get your sorbet and water ice out of here because snowballs are the king of consistency. Don't believe me? Then head on over to Hanson's Snowblizz and try it out for yourself. Since 1939, this family owned establishment has been serving the softest shaved ice in town and saturated with their groundbreaking homemade syrups. So get your plastic gallon of crap out of here. You need to leave. Oh, you think making your own syrup is impressive? The original owner, Grandpa Ernest, built the machine that shaves the ice back in 1939 and patented the damn thing. So yeah, this family knows what they're doing when it comes to snowballs. And lastly for desserts, we need to stop by a New Orleans bakery. King cake, eclairs, shoe soles? Where could you possibly find all these things? The answer is Haydell's Bakery. While other American children were stuffing their faces with birthday cupcakes at school, me and my contemporaries were celebrating with the purple, green, and gold doughy slab known as king cake. Essentially, it's a ring of twisted cinnamon roll style dough topped with icing, colored to show the traditional Mardi Gras colors. But eat it slowly, because the cake is pregnant. No, seriously, there's a little actual baby in there. The baby symbolizes luck to whoever finds it. That person is also also responsible for purchasing the next year's cake or even hosting the next Mardi Gras party, or in some cases, getting a fun trip to the emergency room for accidentally swallowing it. Then there's Doberge cake. Wait, Doberge, hold on. Yeah. Is it Doberge or how do you say it? Doberge. Doberge. Okay, thank you. Love you. Bye. Love you too. Bye. Doberge cake is a New Orleans original made of multiple thin layers of cake alternating with dessert pudding and is my mama's favorite. For a real deep cut and my personal favorite, you'll have to try a slice of Russian cake. Some like to call it the Frankenstein cake because it's literally made by taking assorted bakery scraps and pressing them together into a cake tin. It's rich, moist, and soaked in rum. And quite frankly, you won't find anything like this on the entire planet. New Orleans is called the Big Easy for a reason. Known for its round the clock nightlife, you bet your ass that this bar scenes and nightlife section of the video is gonna be full of a ton of places. Here's a map of the areas we'll be covering throughout the city. Let's start in Mid-City, a place where locals like to experience New Orleans. For you beer enthusiasts and lovers of a vibey outdoor patio, this spot has a beer garden worthy to name itself after, Bayou Beer Garden. It's large and comfortably shaded with a bar outside where you can order a few of the 100 plus beers available, all served in a quaint cottage turned sports bar with pub fare, TVs, and a front porch. In the heart of Mid-City, you'll find another safe haven for beer and other libations, a more modern styled bar that's great for indoor and outdoor chilling. Wrong iron on a green, 50 beers on tap, food trucks, vibe lights, bocce ball, what else could you ask for? Looking for something a little different? Let's check out some spots in a central city and garden district neighborhoods, another area locals like to indulge in. While the neighborhood itself may not be classy, this swanky rooftop bar on top of the Ponchin Train Hotel is hot tin. Get a breathtaking view of the city and enjoy a cozy and intimate atmosphere with perfectly mixed cocktails. Plan your visit around sunset to get an astounding skyline view. Just south of Central City lies the Garden District, most famous for its restaurants and shops along Magazine Street. The list of suggestions are endless, but we're gonna change it up and recommend a welcoming Caribbean slash Latin American joint by the name of the Rum House. Taco Tuesdays, margaritas, jerk chicken, everything you could possibly imagine from our neighbors down at the equator are represented at this fine establishment. Don't forget to visit Midday to check out their spectacular happy hour, to drink some rum and let out your inner beach bum. Along the river, in an industrial part of the Lower Garden District, lies one of the best breweries in the city. 
Urban South Brewery, a spacious warehouse full of colorful picnic tables, perfect for groups of people, families, and dog lovers, an outdoor patio, arcade games, TVs, and occasionally a bounce house for kids. Seriously, this place has it all. And we didn't even mention the beers. Missed out on some snowballs earlier? Don't worry. Urban South has a whole series dedicated to snowball IPAs. Not into that, keep it simple with their staple Paradise Park, a smooth, refreshing lager. And they have numerous sours and seltzers if you're into that. All right, now let's get into the good stuff. The French Quarter is an absolute heaven for tourists, and we can't express enough just how endless the bar scene is here. So here's another standout for us. Now, we're gonna assume you know about frozen daiquiris, a tasty blend of rum, juice, and sugar, always refreshing. But have you ever heard of an ice cream daiquiri? Well, you'll find them at Gazebo Cafe. Nestled in one of the tourist-dense spots of the quarter lies a literal gazebo full of liquor, ice cream, and talented folks who really know how to use a blender. Try a boozy dreamsicle made with vodka, amaretto, and OJ, or our favorite, the grasshopper, which basically tastes like you're drinking a Girl Scout Thin Mint cookie. And of course, you can't talk about the French Quarter without mentioning the notorious Bourbon Street. Here's a quick rundown of five classic bars worth mentioning. The world famous Cat's Meow. No, we didn't add the world's famous. That's in the actual title. But this is just a standard spot that's always popping, with karaoke and an upstairs deck area to get a view of the street, perfect for people watching. There's Beach on Bourbon, it's the perfect venue for outdoor seating and live music. Come here for a killer patio and to dance into the night. The Carousel Bar and Lounge has one of the most interesting gimmicks to get you to pay for overpriced drinks. Here in Hotel Montleon, you'll find a circular bar that revolves like a carousel in a cool lounge ambience. Pat O'Brien's is another casual hangout spot. They invented the Hurricane a palatable fruity rum beverage. Grab one and chill out in the relaxing courtyard, which is accompanied by a flaming water fountain display. And lastly, there's Lafitte's Blacksmith's Shop Bar, a very, very, very old bar that's not afraid to make your drink strong. Their famous voodoo purple drink is guaranteed to have you come out your shell and will start your night out from zero to 60 real quick. Looking for some live music? The Maronese Frenchman Street is the leading authentic music district. Describing themselves as a smooth offshoot of a New York City pub, you'll find nightly live music here at DBA. This low-key venue is the perfect destination for live jazz music. Needing something a little bit more upbeat? Head on over to the Maison. This place is literally a Maison, which is just French for house. There's all sorts of rooms for different vibes. There's a full service restaurant during the day, a backstage, a mezzanine level, and even a penthouse. And just a little further down Frenchman Street is the tiny neighborhood of Bywater. If you didn't feel the homey vibe at the Maison, then you'll definitely feel it at Bachnell Fine Wine and Spirits. This funky little wine shop has a big backyard with nightly live music. I know we moved on from the restaurant section of the video, but save room for the food here because it's sensational. This area is the perfect place to avoid all that Bourbon Street buffoonery. And lastly, to finish off this list, head on a few blocks down Charters to Elizabeth. Open from the early mornings to the late night, this place is perfect for almost anything. Come in the morning for a Bloody Mary, come midday to snack on some praline bacon and boudin balls, or come at night and repeat the same mistakes you made the night before. <sighs> Boy. That was lengthy. This may be our longest video yet, but that's what happens when you cover a city that's full of so many fun things to do. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and don't forget to go down in the comments below and recommend which destination we should cover next.